Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to ENG4E, brought to you by Wassa Distance Education Center. I'm your instructor, Mike Laverty, and today is Tuesday, March the 7th, 2023. Hope everybody's doing great out there. It's uh, starting to feel a little bit sunnier here in Sioux Lookout as we uh, uh, broadcast from our, our, our brand new studio, which looks out onto uh, Front Street in Sioux Lookout. The, the sun is shining bright, feels nice in here. We are on to, like I said, class 17 of this of this course. That's ENG4E, that's grade 12 workplace level English. So we're still working our way through Unit 3. There are four units in this class, in this course, in ENG4E. And we are coming down to the end of uh, this unit. So we've got key questions 34 and 35 today. Tomorrow's class, we will delve into key question 20 36. Sorry. That's uh, key question 36 is about uh, you're going to write a proposal. Yesterday's class, we were looking at somebody else's proposal. But with today's class, we're going to talk about um, 34 and 35, which is. Give me one moment. Is a, a letter of promise. Whoops, just missed it. It's a uh, sorry. A a letter of uh, sorry. Letters with style and memos with character. So we're going to talk about letters and memos today in in more detail. Just want to make an important announcement, an important some important dates to keep in mind. The WASA office will be closed <coughs> uh, during the March break, so teachers and staff will be off work. The office will be will be shut down. So please, please keep that in mind. I'm not sure what the situation is going to be like in your community and at your learning center with your DECs so they, they may or may not be available but for sure you won't be able to contact the WASA staff as we are all on uh, vacation during that time F so from Monday March the 13th to Friday March the 17th there will be no classes or broadcast during that time so so the way that works is we're on we're on week five right now. We'll have a break, and then we'll do week six, week seven, week eight, and then week nine. We are done, our broadcasts and classes. So another way of looking at that, we've got unit one wrapped up, unit two wrapped up. That took us weeks one, two, three, and four. Uh, we finished week four. <laughs> Now we're on to week five, and so I think that we sh we might be able to finish off this unit by the end of this week because uh, next class, well, we might go into week six too because I, I, I want to give at least a couple of classes to, to talk about the culminating activity in, in further detail. But for sure, uh, you know, week six and seven and possibly eight, we'll talk about unit four. And depending on how much time we have left over, I will reevaluate and maybe go back and, and talk about some things that we either rushed over or we didn't give enough time that we thought was needed. I think I mentioned this before that this is my first time teaching ENG4E. So I had to become familiar with the course material, but uh, I'm also kind of figuring out the best way to to let the students know about all that material and how to balance out all my lessons. So I 
may have gone through some of the parts a little bit too quickly, but we won't know that until we get through all the units. And then we'll have plenty of time to go back and just sort of find some spots that we didn't give enough attention to. So if you're tuning in live on 91.9 FM, that's great. Thanks for tuning in and listening. You can also listen on Bell Express View channel 972. And if you're listening, always know that you can phone in when we're broadcasting live. You can phone 1-807-737-4017 or the 1-800 number. That's 1-800-465-7144. So please consider doing that, asking a question, getting involved in the class discussion, making a comment on the class, whatever, whatever the case may be. Also note that you can go to zoom.us, click on that join button at the top of the screen, and then you'll be asked to enter a meeting ID. So our Zoom meeting ID is 417-6699-799. So you enter that, enter that code, that meeting ID, and you can join our discussions Monday to Thursday, 2 p.m. to 2.50 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you can't find us, if you can't join us live, then you can type in my last name, L-A-V-E-R-T-Y space WASA, W-A-H-S-A. You'll find my YouTube channel, and you'll go to the playlist, and there you'll find ENG4E playlist, I'm also teaching ENG3E right now. And last term, I taught OLC40. So you can find all three courses on my YouTube channel. If you need help with any of those courses, this is a really great spot to do it because if you're watching this or listening to this, you know that I, I go and I break down all of the assignments. And hopefully, if I've done my job correctly, giving you lots of uh, insights and explanations and getting you off on the right foot to answer these questions and paying close attention to the assignment guidelines. Because I, I have noticed that from a, as I grade more and more papers from the three courses that I'm teaching right now is that I, I think that you know more often than not it's it's not that people lack the ability to, to write these assignments or they lack the ability to complete them. I honestly think one of the biggest hurdles is just um, people not taking their time and not reading the uh, assignments guidelines carefully and making a checklist or do, doing some kind of a system where you're, you're making sure that you haven't missed any of the essential requirements of the assignment. So that's what I try to do with these with these lessons is to is to break them down into as much detail as possible and to highlight some things that I think you might miss and to you know place a focus uh, on other things um, you know just note that there's many ways you can submit your work and it's it's never too late to to, to start and to, and to get something going especially at this point in the year there there is lots of time to to get things done We've got 15 weeks to graduation, so you know, stay focused, stay on the mission. Uh, you, you do have the time to, to, to get a chorus, to, to move towards graduating. And reach out to your DC if you've got any questions. You can fax pages to 1-800-463-7852. You can phone, you can email, you can fax, you can take pictures. Some of my students are using Google Docs, so please consider doing that. Just find some way to get your material in, and we'll work with you to find the best way to do that. So please submit your work into groups of 5 to 10, just a friendly reminder. Um, if you want to submit one assignment, that's totally fine. It's The problem for me is when students submit like um, an entire unit, and, um, and then they're not getting the feedback. Like they do get the feedback, but then it might be too late. And so I think it, it's good to just send in a handful of assignments. Like five is probably the ideal number. I can get them back to you quickly, and that will guide your future work. So you're not waiting long to get that stuff back. 
And please be sure to write down your name, your community, the course code, and any assignment information. Reach me at mlaverty at nnecschools.org. Find me on Facebook Messenger, Laverty Wassa. Uh, add me as a friend on Facebook or just send me a message. Phone the Wassa office, 1-807-737-1488, extension 2211. Ask for Mike if you get the receptionist or 1-800-667-3703. We are waiting for your call. We are here to help you graduate. So give us a call. We will help you as best we can. Here's your four-week suggested progress. So you should have made contact with myself, read the study guide, Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3, read most of where the rivers meet, Chapters 1 through 12, completed all your assignments in Unit 1, and completed most of your assignments in Unit 2. So if you've put four weeks into the chorus, I'm recommending that's kind of where you should be in, in terms of how many assignments you've completed. And I've mentioned this before, but I, I know that everybody works on their own level. We all work on our own pace. But ultimately, at the, at the end of the day, you still have to get this stuff done. And, you know, 15 weeks I I is, is enough time to get it done, but you've got to start... You know, you got to start now if you, if you want to get uh, an entire course done before the, the graduation date. And even if you're not graduating, that's going to be your deadline in terms of getting work in and getting the credit and not having to wait until next school year to, to keep your education going. And we, there, 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 there might be the possibility of some summer classes and things like that, but nothing is really determined at this point. And you should probably just assume that you should get your stuff in by that June fifteenth graduation uh, deadline. So on to today's lesson, we'll have our discussion on the words of the day. We'll look at key questions thirty-four and thirty-five. Your learning goals are to take notes as we discuss how to format business letters and memos and to brainstorm ideas for your letters and memos, right? So you're, so you're learning about a form, you're learning how other people do it, you're looking at examples, you're looking at templates. And, and this is often what we do in, in, in when, when we work in communications, whether we are employees who are who are paid communicators or whether we're students then we are we're learning how to work in a particular form or a genre or a type and then and the way you and the way you master it is by looking at many examples of it like for example if you want to be a filmmaker or you want to be a screenwriter and that's what you want to do you want to write scripts for movies and television then you're going to have to read a lot of those scripts and read uh, experts talking about those scripts and how they wrote those scripts and how they formatted them and how they organized them, right? If you, if you want to be a journalist who writes for a newspaper, you, sh you got to read a lot of newspaper articles and have someone explain them to you and, and break them down and study them. So that's, that's a lot of what we do. Um, this is a college, sorry, this is a workplace English chorus. So the the focus is on English that you may encounter in the workforce in, in a variety of settings where people are communicating with each other so that's why we're focusing on these different forms of communication and today's focus will be on business letters and memos which we've already kind of looked at in a previous class but we'll we'll go into further detail today and then we're going to brainstorm some ideas for your letters, right? So you look at some examples and then it's going to be your turn to write your own. Your success criteria for today are to become familiar with the various forms of business communication by reviewing their format and purpose and to complete key questions 34 and 35. So I've got those two key words up on the board again and if you're just listening online then I will repeat them. Format and purpose. So that's uh, a large part of what today's discussion is about. Looking at how information is organized into a particular format. 
right? So, I mean, it, it's interesting if you look at the word information it's, itself, it means um, like that which is not formed, right? It's, it's information. It, it's sort of, it's just ideas. And so, uh, you know, what, what a writer does is they take information, which is just sort of like ideas and just thoughts in your head, and, and they give it form, right? And so, so when you give information form, that's when you're formatting and, and, you're, and you're putting it into a specific format. And, and the reader's response to it is going to change depending on the, the kind of format that they see. It, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tangent, but I think it's worth talking about it. When I when I lived in Winnipeg, a a friend of mine invited me to come work on a movie set one day, and I was just blown away that I could just show up, and I could be part of a I could be part of a movie set for even for just a day, which is really cool. But at one point, they had a bin full of uh, lenses. And these lenses were meant to go in front of a camera and they would make the footage look a certain way. And all of them were, all of these lenses had different names like, like, uh, like TV commercial and horror movie and, uh, you know, like uh, dramatic comedy and like you name it, whatever, whatever format you can think of, they had one. And then you would look at the world through that lens and it would sort of it it would it would be like you were in a commercial or you were in like a 90s sitcom or you were in the in a horror movie or in like a documentary film so it's kind of cool so and and that happens with the way you format things and when you format your writing into a business letter for example it just gives off the air you know it 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 tells the reader that this is written by a professional, somebody who cares, and I should pay attention to it. And then, of course, purpose is um, <coughs> is very closely associated with format. Our format and our purpose should be aligned. They should be working in unison. They should be um, they should be connected, right? Because the you know you might pick your format. You're probably going to pick your purpose first. You're going to you're going to figure out what you want to do, and then you'll find the right format to to make that happen. All right, so let's let's jump into our words of the day. Uh, just a little caveat here, a little warning, or just important information. I don't speak the Anishinaabe Moan language. I wish I did, but I am trying to learn more words in the language and trying to. Uh, incorporate it a little more in my lesson planning and I think it's just important given who WASA and NNEC serves and just given that we're broadcasting on a Sioux Lookout so I'm just trying my best to incorporate a bit of this into my lesson planning and uh, just further our discussions on language and you know it doesn't have to just be the English language it's good it's always good to have that point of comparison so I've got two words up on the board the first one is 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 maji bige, which is a verb, which is she or he writes a letter. So that's a verb. I got that coded in green. And we've got maji bigan, which is a noun, which is an outgoing letter. So a letter that you are sending, or a letter that's leaving an organization and going somewhere else. Okay. Uh, in English, we have uh, correspondence, so that's a noun, which is uh, communication by the exchange of letters. So this is news, commentary, letters, etc., received from a newspaper or a magazine. So y you'll often hear about a a correspondent. And, and a correspondent is someone who works as a journalist and they're, they're typically sent out to work in a particular part of the world. The, the phrase is, is, sometimes, is sometimes written as a foreign correspondent. So someone who lives in a different country and then writes articles uh, or sends information in the form of letters or emails to their bosses at the publication where they work. 
and that is their correspondence. Another related word is communication. That's a noun. This is the imparting or exchange of thoughts, opinions, or information by speech, writing, or signs. So again, it's, it's, uh, it's important to think about this information, this thing without form, you know, this, these ideas and these things that are in our heads and we want to get them out of our heads and into the heads of our readers, right? So it's actually kind of a magical thing, you know, when, when, you, when you break it down, right? Um, maybe I'll look that quote up. I know that there's a quote from, from Stephen King where he just, he just talks about how amazing it is to, you know, you could, you could read a book from a thousand years ago and that person's thoughts are literally inside your head right and and what they thought about and what they cared about is now part of your world right so it's a, it's actually a pretty amazing thing that we can do that and you know that that's what it means to communicate and it's a it's a key point to just always be aware um you know when you're completing your assignments in this course and when you go on to other things in life when you you know other other english courses or whatever job you may find yourself in years from now that, you know, communication is, is a two way street and, and it, it involves two people. There's, there's an audience and a, and a person who makes the content, right? There, there's a writer and there's an audience and sometimes you're the audience and sometimes you're the creator. Sometimes you're the person generating the content. So it kind of goes back and forth. And you'll see like with, with social media and Facebook and things like that, very often we are the audience of something and then right away we're the writer too right so we we read stuff and we respond to it and we get fired up over certain things and you know so there's forms of communication that are fast and shooting off a text message or a facebook message or commenting a really you know a fired up post on someone's wall for example I would say are examples of sort of like fast and quick communication. But today's class, we're going to be talking about forms of communications that are a bit slower. And, you know, I think that there's certainly an advantage with email and messaging and, you know, that the speed and simplicity of it are definitely valuable and useful to us. But there's certainly a real value in what some people call like long form communication like writing a letter or writing a memo so that's what we're going to delve in today so what i want to do is i want to share with you uh an online resource so i think i've mentioned this in, in this class before this is indeed.com so indeed.com is is a place where you can find job applications you can upload your own profile you can see postings, but they also have like a great business section and they give you lots of tips. So they've got an article, I, I missed the P there, whoops, four types. It should be T-Y-P-E-S. The four types of business letter form with templates and how to improve your memo format with memo sample and examples. So. I am going to go to that web page right now and have a look. All right, so we've got if you just if you type in indeed and then four types of business letters There it is, four types of business letters with formats. Make sure you can see my screen. If you're listening online, I will read this out loud to you. All right, so Indeed.com's Business Center, their, uh, their career development page, has this very useful article, and it reads four types of business letters with templates. Business letters are an essential part of communication between companies. For this type of letter to look professional, you need to write it using the right format. Understanding how to format, format one of these documents can help you communicate professionally at work. In this article, we discuss what a business letter is, 
we share how to format one, we explore different types of formats, and we provide two templates and a sample to guide you in writing one in formal and semi-formal situations. What is a business letter? A business letter is a document used internally or externally to communicate information to various recipients. Companies use business letters to demonstrate professionalism along with their message. A good business letter follows a certain format to ensure it's readable for the receiver. For instance, some business letters include a letterhead to communicate their contact information more professionally. Right, yeah, so if you, if you represent an organization, that organization will have an official letterhead and every letter or piece of communication they send out will have that letterhead and that's an example of branding so it's it's got their corporate logo on it it's got their motto and they use that example when they when they communicate with the outside world or even when they just communicate internally for your letter to have desired effect you need to understand the elements that comprise a business letter so here's the elements the senders address so you include your address if you if you have a letterhead you don't need to cuz that's what the letterhead does but you you include your full name your business address the name of your city your postal code phone number email address you put the receiver's address uh same information using the person's title and last name is acceptable when you don't know their full name the best option is to research who you're addressing a letter to and get all their information so use their full name if you can but if you don't, you can use their title and their and just use their last name. And if you don't know who you're talking to, you can do your best and say like to the hiring manager or something like that. Use uh, a date format. Um, the most formal format is the international recognized year, month, date. This means you start with the year, then follow with the month. So September 17th, 2021, for example. Or you can also choose to write the date in full, right? So um, I, I myself prefer writing out the date in full like that rather than just using numbers. There's, there's, you can't mistake uh, letters, right? September is September. Salutation is how you um, open the letter. So dear, full name, that's usually all you need. There's the body of your, of your letter. So and and they break this down into three paragraphs. So m most business letters are going to follow that three paragraph format. So I would I would use that introductory paragraph that introduces yourself, states the reason why you're writing. Um. So you, you go straight to the point. No greetings. No small talk. Tell them what you want. The main paragraph goes into detail. So you introduce your main idea. Then in one paragraph, you give them as much details as you can. Maybe two main two body, two middle paragraphs if you need them, and then a closing paragraph where you briefly summarize your main paragraph and reiterate any important details in the request. Closing remarks and then a signature. So yours truly, sincerely. Um, if it's less formal, you can say best regards, best wishes, something like that. Uh, end your letter with your signature, your full name, and your title in that order. Ensure you leave enough space between your closing remark and your full name to actually sign it. Um, so you can use software to sign it, but best case scenario, you're actually signing it yourself. Formatting for different... Okay, so this, this comes in in the assignment itself, right? So we have full block format. So full block format is the default form for a for a formal business letter. So when in doubt, you can use the full block format as a safe option. For this type of formatting, there are no indentations in the paragraphs. Every part of the business letter is left aligned under the full block format, including your sender and receiver addresses. And for readability, you identify a new paragraph by skipping a line. So that's full block format. Then we have what is known as the modified block format. The modified block format is the same as the full block, except the sender's address is right aligned. This format is slightly less formal than a full block format. This format is most appropriate when addressing the letter to someone with whom you have a working relationship. 
So, you know, we, we keep things format. We keep things formal with people we don't know and don't have a, a relationship with. So if you're going to use this modified block format, it's got to be someone that you have a relationship previously with. Whether it's inside the organization or it's someone you have already made contact with and have sent letters, some correspondence back and forth. The semi-block format is the same as the full block except the paragraphs have indentations. If you don't like the look of the single line between your paragraphs, you can opt for this format. The semi-block format is also appropriate for formal letters. So semi-block is you indent the paragraphs. Um, yeah, so that's, that's just a very minor modification. And the simplified business letter uses a subject line instead of a salutation. Beyond that exception, it follows the same format. So the simplified form is... Um, best for letters that have multiple recipients, you can use the simplified form for circulars or memos, right? So so that's kind of like a memo. We're, we're getting into that. Uh, you know, it's more simplifi simplified. All right, we'll come back to the memo in a sec. I just want to make sure we have enough time to, to go into this assignment here, letters with style. So uh, unit three, key question 34, letters with style, 20 marks. You are to examine the following scenarios and write a letter for each scenario in response. Your first letter will be created using the block format, and the second letter will be created in modified block format. So remember, the modified block is the inside address, the date, and closing will be placed one-half to two-thirds of the way across the page to the right and lined up vertically. So uh, we'll, we'll show you what that looks like in a sec. So here is scenario one. So this this is so the first letter is written in block format. The second one is modified. So scenario one, you are graduating from high school this year, and you are hoping to attend Confederation College in Sioux Lookout next September. You are interested in the one-year office administration program offered. You are to write a letter to Miss Angelina Anderson, Campus Director at 100 Kashmir Avenue, Dryden, Ontario, P8N3L4, requesting information about that program. In your letter, you are to mention that you will be graduating from high school this year and you would eventually like a job working in an office environment. Right, so for this assignment, you're not, you know, you're not, you're not, you're, you're pretending to be this person who's interested in this office admin program and wants to work in an office environment. So that may not be who you are, but for the sake of argument, that's who you are for this assignment. Scenario one continued. You see the office administration program meeting your needs, right? So you see that program is helping you get what you want. You will need to know what kind of overall average, average will be needed in your courses this year to allow you to enroll and the sorts of courses you can expect to be taking if accepted into the program at Confederation College. Finally, you will need to know what this program will cost over the one year and whether or not the college assists students in finding suitable accommodations. Be sure to thank Mrs. Anderson for her time. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a Word document and we'll just uh, look at the formatting. So actually what I'll do is I'll go back to this indeed.com article so you see they have the format and this this is the template right here and they've got the the square bracket so you put your name your position in the company your company's name your company's address city province or territory mobile number email address the date you sent the letter their information um, there's the semi-formal So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this content. And so you can always copy and paste text from a website and throw it into a Word document if you have a Word document. If you're working on a Chromebook, you can use Google Docs. And WordPad is a free word processor that you can, you can uh, put on, on, on your device. So y you do have some options, but... I think Microsoft Word is probably your best option. 
it's probably the most versatile one and it, it does cost money so hopefully you have it on your machine or maybe you have access to it from a learning center or again uh, WASA does have we do have access to Chromebooks so I if, if you think that's the best option for you we, we can always look at the possibility of sending up a Chromebook to you in your community so you can complete the assignments that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this content and I'm going to right click on it and copy it after I've highlighted it. And then I'm going to go to my Word. Make sure everyone can see that. And then I'm gonna paste it right in. So I didn't like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna control Z to get rid of all that and I'm gonna go to I can paste it like that. I can merge formatting, keep text only. Well we'll do that. Alright, so just looking at this this thing. I think it was italicized on the website. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to change that. It, it, it should not be in italics. So I'm going to go control A and I'm going to get rid of the italics. I'm going to put it in a 12 point font. And so you know, it's good to 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 get the terminology right. So this is the um full block format so uh, this is the requirements there is that everything is aligned to the left and you see that uh, if, if you go on Microsoft Word or most word processing software there's the ribbon on the top and the ribbon is just where you access all the tools and the things you need to um, to complete your assignments so <coughs> So the the full block format is you know everything number one everything is aligned to the left. The sender's information is aligned to the left. Um, there are no indentations at the start of the paragraph, and there is a line separating separating the paragraphs so those are my those are my requirements for for this full block full block formatting and the um you know the other the other formatting would that we that we talked about was the modified block format. And let's just make sure we got those figured out. So the modified block format is and I'm just gonna copy and paste that, but it's mostly the same, right? Everything is aligned to the left, um except in the block in the modified block format, except the sender's information. Um which is aligned to the right. And then the same, and then everything goes after that. There's no indentation at the start of the paragraph. There is a line separating the paragraphs. <coughs> so if I highlighted the sender's information and I picked that right justification up at the top here, align the content with the right margins. <coughs> There we go. So that is the that's the modified block format. So it seems like a minor change, and it, and it is, but it just it, it just signifies. Um, it does signify a working relationship. So, and and that's why it's good to to study these different kind of forms and, and be familiar with different formats because you may not be aware of the messaging you're sending to other people. And and that's why it's good to to be, you know, uh, aware of different formats and and being aware that you are sending people messages 
without sending them a message, right? So there, there are the words you type, but there's also how you type them and how you give them to the person. That really changes how the how the message is received, right? So um, Marshall McLuhan is a is a famous Canadian intellectual, and he's most famous for um, saying that the medium is the message and I, I think that, that 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 phrase means a lot of things, but you know, my understanding is that, you know, you know, the the way something is expressed is the message, right? A lot of the times, right? So so the way you the way you communicate an idea is really important and it might not be as important as the ideas themselves, but it could be. And you know, I, I I've done a lot of job interviews myself, have sat down with a lot of young people and older people and people in all kind of stages in their life but one time I one time I received a an, an assignment or sorry a, a resume from a young boy who couldn't have been more than you know 11 or 12 years old but he had written his resume on pencil crayon and and the message was great like he, he had all the you know he had the right attitude. He didn't have the skills or the life experience, but he really wanted the job. But it was just kind of funny to see it written out in this kind of really messy uh, pencil crayon on like a piece of scrap paper he had founded, right? So it's like I, I applauded his initiative and in getting the work out there, but he certainly didn't do himself any favors in trying to appear professional, right? So... Um, and and that and that's a lot of what it comes down to, right? You just want to look like you know what you're doing, uh, even if you don't. Um, and you know, I think that's just that's just that's just life. That's being a human, right? Sometimes we have no idea what we're doing, but if we can at least pretend um, and put a little bit of work into it, then we can we can show people that we've put uh, some effort into thinking about our message and the communication that we're taking. And that's really what this business letter is all about. It's just demonstrating that you've taken the time to produce a long form of communication and the person will um, will take you seriously, your audience, right? So you can just take a template like this and just start to, to, to fill in the blanks, right? So, um, you know, you, you just sort of like, and that's what a template is for, right? So instead of Lydia Payne, it's Mike Laverty. And I'm not going to talk about because I'm, I'm not writing this letter from a I'm not writing this from a perspective of a company. I'm writing it from me. So I'm going to do 90. Let's see, 99 uh, Hockey Street. <laughs> Just, just kind of messing with it. Doesn't have to be accurate. Sue Lookout Ontario, sure that can be that. That can that can be my phone number. I will change it. Eight zero seven five five five. Good. And then let's do Mike Laverty at email dot com. And we'll do today's uh, date, which is. Um, March the 7th, 2023, and then, you know, and then here is where we would, we would go back and, you know, and, th and then we're just going to input things, right? So I'm, I'm going to go back and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to include some key information, right? So where am I now? Yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to put and Miss, I'm going to write down her name, Miss Angelina Anderson, campus director. Uh, I'm going to put her address down, Confederation College's address down, and then uh, and then make sure you include all these things. So make sh so um, in your letter you are to mention that you'll be graduating from high school this year and you'll eventually get a job working in an office environment, right? So you can always just sort of copy and paste. And then um, you might want to do something like this too, right? You might want to like give yourself some notes, like paragraph one. Uh, 
introduce myself and explain the program I want to take. So this is going to be like notes that I'm giving myself. And then, you know, paragraph two, I'm going to, um, I'm going to explain the details, you know, as mentioned in the assignment, in my own words. And then paragraph three, we're going to do the, um, This will be my closing paragraph. Uh, thank the campus director. Just giving myself some notes. So that's what I would do there, right? So um, so and then I'm just taking that format and I am just adding my details. And I can use some of that wording. I can it into my own words but it just gives you an, it gives you a, an idea of how to of how to write it and and what's what kind of language you should be using in a, in a business letter so scenario two is you have worked at your local northern store for several years and you have recently been promoted by the company to the position of manager the former manager was retiring and needed to be replaced you have been thankful for this opportunity and have been doing your very best to satisfy both your employees and customers. So that's the scenario. A few days ago, however, you were in a really bad mood because of something that had happened away from work. Unfortunately, you have, been taken, you have taken some frustration and anger out on a customer by the name of Mary Weary. She had accidentally bumped into you while coming around a corner, and even though she said she was sorry, you got upset with her. Mary was shocked by your reaction, and she probably would not be back shopping at the store for a while. She said that. She'd not be back for a while. She had decided to tell her family and friends about the incident. You are to write a letter of apology to Mary to say you are sorry for your words and behavior and encourage her to return and shop as she always has. You are even willing to allow her a free shopping spree to a value of $150. All right. So we got Mary Weaver, right? So this, this is the second letter. And remember, the second letter is to be done in the modified block format. So if I go back to my document here. So I'm going to change this. So it's going to be... Um, I'm going to... I'm going to set... I'm gonna so I'm using the modified block format. So I'm sending my sender address to the to the right hand margin and I am writing to Mary Weaver and let's give her let's so she's at 98 Broadway Drive and she's in Sioux Lookout Ontario and we'll give her a Sioux Lookout postal code PAT1B3 all right so, dear Mary Weaver. And again, you're going you're gonna to want to give yourself some notes. So, paragraph one is to introduce myself and explain the problem I want to address or solve. Um, Paragraph two will be to explain explain my actions and propose a solution. And then paragraph three is the closing paragraph. Um, thank her for shopping with us and say to contact me directly, right? So I'm, I'm just giving myself some notes and this is what I'm going to write about. So yours sincerely. Space for my actual signature. Mike Laverty. And then... So in this case, I would put my title. Let's go back to the, the question at hand here. Um... Uh, 
Okay, so you're the, you're the we are we are in the, in this scenario we are the manager of the of the northern store. So if I go back to here, whoops. I go back to my screen share. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Mike Laverty, manager of Northern Store. In Sioux Lookout, 98 Hockey Street. Right, so there you go. So and then I'm gonna write about um, and then and then I've got my paragraphs organized by what I'm gonna write about. So I'm gonna introduce myself, talk about the problem I want to solve and 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 how we're going to solve it. So explain my actions, you know, uh, apologize, and propose a solution. Doesn't hurt to apologize twice. You might want to put that in there twice. All right, so that's all the time we have for today. It's up to you to actually write the letter and get that done, but the formatting is really important, so hopefully that's helped you. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I will see you tomorrow.